Greetings and salutations, friends, and welcome back to more Warhammer lore. Today, we're going to take a look at one of the regiments of Renau. In this case, Al Mukhtar's Desert Dogs. This one is one of the many cases in which Warhammer essentially borrows parts of um, modern pop culture and history. In this case, it is The Lawrence of Arabia, primarily the movie, but of course the movie was also based on real-life historical events, so it's a little bit of a mix. You see, the Desert Dogs are essentially a gathering of various deep desert tribes, outlaws and corsairs. Not the most unified of bands to begin with, as you can well imagine, but the real interesting part is the fact that the person who has unified all of these, in the vast majority of cases, excessively hostile tribes, is not an Arabian noble, or even one from amongst their own ranks. It is a man of the Empire, Vanna Glock. A relatively minor noble, by most accounts, he was sent off to a boarding school, a rather exclusive border school, in Marienburg. Unfortunately, being a relatively minor noble, the rest of the proper nobles took a bit of a um, personal interest in making sure that he was not particularly fond of his new living arrangements. To put it bluntly, to say that Werner was bullied is much like saying that Hitler was a little bit harsh on the Jews. And to make things just that little bit worse, the teachers at Werner's school, in the spirit of solidarity and cooperation, decided to side with the rest of the noble children because, well, they value their jobs. And so, Werner couldn't even run to the adults for protection. Werner's school life was not entirely ideal, to sum it up, and he escaped his uncomfortable situations by dreaming of going on travels, essentially getting as far the fuck away from his current location as humanly possible. And eventually, he did get out of school without being... Well, permanently psychically scarred at the very least, although considering his later history, I can't be entirely certain that the regular beatings and mistreatments did not leave just a little bit of a twist in his otherwise pristine psyche. Nevertheless, Werner somehow managed to survive his schooling and began his trip around the world, eventually ending up in the Arabian city of Lasgaic, a city rightfully famous for its somewhat shady clientele. Said reputation might have something to do with the fact that the majority of the population are either pirates, cutthroats, pickpockets, or some other form of thieve. The only people in Lasgaic that aren't thieves would be the corrupt city officials, who aren't technically thieves because they steal from you by the book. Young Werner, however, came prepared. He was no average tourist and had used the fairly lengthy sea voyage and the even lengthier cart voyage from the Empire to Tilea to study up on the language of Araby, and could speak more or less not only fluently Arabian, but could also curse like a local, which earned him a great deal of respect from the various people that inhabited the city and attempted to inhabit his pockets. Werner, on his side, was gratified to find that the locals were fairly friendly. Granted, he had to yell at them a bit to, you know, have them stop stealing from him first, but after the whole customary greeting ritual of trying to take all of his cash was over and done with, the locals were fairly fascinated and even marginally cooperative towards this strange blonde and blue-haired stranger. Unfortunately, or as it turns out, maybe fortunately for Werner, however, there was still quite a bit of tourists left in him, and he eventually hired a caravan to travel out and see some famous ruins. Unsurprisingly to anyone who's ever read a fantasy or mystery novel, he got ambushed by bandits, because of fucking course he did. 
First and foremost, he's travelling with only a guide and a blind beggar boy, and secondly, the wealthy foreigner with the strained hair and sparkly eyes had acquired a fair bit of fame in the less than entirely honest parts of the population. Even less surprisingly, his one trusty bodyguard, who also happened to be his guide, ran off screaming at the first mention of danger, and the blind beggar boy, well, he tried to run off screaming, but being blind, he was not particularly good at hiding, unfortunately. Werner, however, being a bit of a pompous douchebag, decided that these little ragtag sand niggers wasn't particularly dangerous, and decided to fight them with his fists. Now, luckily for Werner, he had acquired a great deal of fist fighting experience during his school days. He had also acquired a fair bit of knowledge on how to fight when heavily outnumbered, and gave a good showing for himself. But the Taharush cannot be so easily avoided. He failed to keep them at an arm's length, and so he was in the most uncomfortable fashion imaginable, captured by his new travelling companions. It should be said, however, that the leader of this ragtag bunch of bandits was suitably impressed by his show of defiance. Unfortunately for Werner, however, the old saying, your resistance only makes me harder, proved to be doubly true for his new friends. The bandits proceeded to tie Werner to a conveniently placed rock in the middle of the desert, and decided to have their laughs and giggles by beating him slowly to death over the course of several days. And while this treatment might certainly be considered cruel and unusual by most people, Werner had suffered far worse at the hands of his beloved classmates back in Marienburg. Don't ask me how a bunch of school children back in a relatively civilized city in the Empire managed to top getting tied to a giant rock in the middle of the desert and then slowly but surely being gang violated by a bunch of Arabs over the course of several days, but somehow they managed. All I can really say to that is that those Marienburg school children must be some damn innovative little cunts. In this case, though, it turns out that getting repeatedly mistreated by one's classmates can actually have positive effects on people, and indeed, life-saving effects. Still isn't something I would personally recommend you try, but for Werner at least it worked out, as having been hardened to even the most unspeakable of hardships after his remarkably interesting school days, he managed to not only resist the attempts or by the bandits to torture him, but also managed quite frequently and vehemently to call their sexuality into question, along with a wide and varied selection of accusations that the bandits had various levels of sexual intercourse with a wide variety of farm animals and or close relatives. And just like Werner's schoolmates must have been some very, very creative little sons of bitches, Werner could turn a phrase as well when he needed to. Eventually, he managed to curse the bandits out to such a degree that they all thought that they might have been cursed by him. In addition to some good old-fashioned countryside legends, they eventually managed to convince themselves that the person they had tied up was Al-Mukhtar, the Chosen One. And while Werner might not have been familiar with the internet, much to his loss, he did realise that if the natives ask you, are you a god, you answer, yes. Yes, I am. I take my sacrifices in virgins, thank you. Whether or not Werner added in that last bit is unknown, but we do know that he eventually grew to a position of leadership within this small band of bandits, and eventually grew this band into a fairly significant fighting force, raiding the trade routes and outlying villages of Arabi. He eventually became such a massive nuisance that the Sheikh of La Sheikh was compelled to fix his problem by offering a very substantial sum of money to kindly ask the desert dogs to fuck off and pick on somebody else. 
This was actually a pretty good idea as far as Al-Mukhtar was concerned, as he still had grand dreams of travelling across the world, and so he took his little merry band of very angry Arabians along with him to travel into the undead lands of Nehekara. Further northwards, he went into the Badlands to play with the Orkies, and eventually travelled as far north as the Border Princes, where his fame continued to grow, and he continued to find employment to satisfy the more um, material needs of his new followers. They might be following the Chosen One, and that's all well and good, but a man can't buy bread off the Chosen One's backside. The Desert Dogs themselves, led by Al-Mukhtar, are a band of light cavalry skirmishers. They use fast, hit-and-run tactic to raid villages, trade routes, etc., and to cut up larger opposition bands into smaller pieces and then pick them off piecemeal, something that they have grown quite damn good at indeed. And Al-Mukhtar himself has proven himself to be quite the capable tactician. Probably something to do with all of those times he had to run and hide from the angry bullies back at school once again. I tell you, that kid might bitch a lot about his upbringing and his educational hardships, but it sure did pay off for him in the end, didn't it? Until next time, I have been Arch, thank you very much for watching, and I do hope to see you all again soon. Have a good day.